الحمد لله رب العالمين أحمده سبحانه وتعالى فلا أحد يستحق الحمد سواه وأصلي وأسلم على خيرته من خلقه محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه واهتدى بهداه ونسأل الله أن يجمعنا به ومعه وأن يسقينا من حوضه يوم نلقاه اللهم آمين ثم آمين ثم آمين يا رب العالمين فنشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له في ملكه ولا مناوي له في سلطانه وعلو شانه ونشهد أن محمدا هو عبده ورسوله أرسله ربه بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله فبلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله تعالى به الغمة اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحابته وكل من اهتدى بهديه إلى يوم الدين أوصانا الله عز وجل كما أوصى الأولين والآخرين بالتقوى ولقد وصينا الذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم وإياكم أن اتقوا الله فنسأل الله أن يجعلنا وإياكم من المتقين أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله فإنما يتقبل الله من المتقين نسأل الله أن يجعلنا منهم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله تعالى وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may Allah's peace and blessings be in the best of his creation Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم And we all bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Muhammad وسلم, is the seal of all prophets and messengers. Whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, nobody can misguide. And whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leads astray, nobody can guide. Oh Allah, guide us all to the straight path, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Give us the haqq and give us the power to stick on it and for it, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma ameen. Ayyuhal akarim, yatakallamu fi hadi al-daqaiq al-ma'adudat an al-masjid, an bayt Allah. In a few minutes, let's talk about the masjid. The house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Baytul Ibadah. Inna man yati ila al-masjidi, inna ma huwa za'irun, lillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala. The minute you come to the masjid, you are visiting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa zuwaruhu fiha ummaruha. Those who keep the masjid busy with ibadat coming to the masjid, those coming to visit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ayyuhu al-akarim, let's try to imagine our life without a masjid. Seriously, how could we get to know one another? This group sitting in here, from all the continents of the world, from different backgrounds. Yes, we do not know, many, many here do not know each other, but the fact that we come together in the same room, listening to the same ma'ala, praying the same prayer, worshipping the same Lord, I mean, Masjid reminds us with all of that. Masjid gets us together by the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَهُ دَوْرُ اجْتِمَاعِ عَظِيمٌ It has a great social, societal role to play by getting us together. يَعْرِفُ الْمُصَلِّي أَخَاءُ The worshippers, we talk about this in a minute, about the, the iPhones and, and the ringtones and stuff. Let's just, you know, be patient inshallah. So coming to the masjid, we are one family, one group. It starts this nucleus for society where we are just like one family. When somebody is sick, we should check on him and visit him or her, get to know one another, get to check on one another. If somebody is in need, we have financial support for him or her. We have what's even better than this, which is ukhuwatul iman, supporting, morally supporting one another. Tabda'u fi uqud al-zawaj. All the, all the important decisions in our life usually start from the masjid. Getting married, you still have ba'af the zawaj in masjid. It's not obligatory, but it's highly recommended to do the marriage contract in the masjid. وَقَدْ وَرَدَ فِي هَذَا حَدِيثِ عِنْدَ التِّرْمِذِي وَلَكِنْ بِسَنَةٍ ضَعِيمٍ وَإِنَّمَ اسْتَحَبَّ الْعُلَمَاءُ ذَلِكَ لِأَنَّهُ عِبَادًا 
وتستحب العبادات ويعظم ثوابها اذا كان في بقاع طيبه كالمسجد. في المسجد يتعارف الناس they get to know one another in the masjid. We pray next to one another. We check on each other. Solidarity, التضامن والتكافل. You will see it in all the masajid. Yes, it could, it, it's probably not at the same level or as it should be 100%, but in any masjid there is the minimum level of all of these good things we'll talk about. Just by the fact of a group of Muslims coming together, building a masjid and coming together to pray in a masjid, they have at least the minimum of all of these values that we talk about in here. A masjid is a reflection of society, a reflection of the community, the Muslim community, whatever they are, the masjid will reflect that. If they are a strong community, you will see a strong masjid, activities, a lot of things going on. If the community is kind of not as active, you know, the masjid will reflect that, how they are close to each other, how they are tied with one another, and so on. Some scholars believe that it's obligatory on meals to pray each single salah in jama'ah, in congregation, in the masjid. And they have their hadith, their text, to quote for that. Like one hadith in Nabi Sallallahu was asked a permission from somebody who was blind, Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum, who was blind. He asked permission from the Prophet Sallallahu not to pray all prayers at home, but just Salatul Fajr. Because he had very strong reasons, excuses. He is blind. He doesn't have anybody to come and lead him for Salatul Fajr. And it's at night and Medina has a lot of, you know, could be lizard or snakes and he could be affected. And Nabi Sallallahu almost gave him the permission, but then Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala revealed it to him that he told him, do you hear the Muaddin? Do you hear the Adhan? You know it's time for prayer? Yes, you have to respond. Allah is calling. Quoting such a hadith, this hadith and other hadith and ayat, uh, some scholars believe it's obligatory for Muslims to get together for jama'at. Walakin, majority of scholars and what appears to be strong is it's only high recommended to have jama'at. Some believe it's fardu kifay. It is a collective duty to have at least jama'ah. Wherever there is a Muslim community, there should be at least one jama'ah done. Or a masjid, you know, should have one jama'ah. And this is something we should think of. Some salawat, we have only one or two. And some other prayers, you might not have anybody. It's obligatory, not on me and you, on all of us to have salah going on in each time for salah. Because this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calling people for come, to come so they have to respond. Bottom line, it's highly recommended for Muslims to get together for daily prayers. Salatul Jum'ah, no disagreement. Obligatory consensus of all scholars, clear ayat and hadith. Even if somebody does not come for Salatul Jum'ah, the hadith mentioned for three consecutive Jum'ahs, Allah would seal on his heart. Allah made it obligatory to come at least once a week, that's for males by the way, highly recommended for women but obligatory on males who does not have any excuse like extremely sick or anything like that or traveling, that they should come together to show and commemorate and celebrate the jama'ah being together at least once a week. وَهَذَا مِنَ الْفُرُوضِ Again, obligatory to come for Salat al-Jum'ah. When you come to the masjid, min adab al-masjid al-tahiyyah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us to deal with the masjid as something alive, greeting the masjid. What do we greet? Usually we do not, we greet living things. Like we greet each other, we greet humans. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet is teaching us or are teaching us to greet the masjid, tahiyyah to masjid as if it's alive. Before you sit down, you pray to Raka'a Sunnah. And we have some hadith in that. Many hadith in Nabi Sallallahu said, if you come to the masjid, إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدُكُمُ الْمَسْجِدِ فَلَا يَجْلِسْ حَتَّى يُصَلِّ رَكَعَتَيْنِ If somebody comes to the masjid, he should not sit down before praying to Raka'a. Some, a, a man came, Abu Qatada came, and he sat down, and Nabi Sallallahu asked him, do you pray before you sit down? He said, no, Ya Rasulullah, I just saw you sitting, and you had some kind of, uh, you were sitting down, and I just sat down. He said, you stand up and pray to Raka'a. الإمام النووي يقول على أن هذا 
اجماع المسلمين على انه للند اتس ريكومندد الامر ليس على الوجوب اتس نوت اوبليجاتوري تو براي اور اني ثينج بيفور يو سيت داون بات اجين ذيس از وات النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم از ساين دو نوت سيت داون بيفور براينج تو راك عليت دو ات از نمبر 1 ثينج وين وي كم تو ذا مسجد كيب ذا مسجد كلين هير ذاتس اوبليجاتوري ميكن اني ديرت ان ذا مسجد ذات ويل انكر ا سن اون يو اف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول عرضت علي it has been submitted to me the good deeds of my ummah of my nation and I was able to see amongst the good deeds somebody who removes or who takes away from the masjid al-qadha some little little dirt could be anything that's on the floor or removing anything bad from the masjid that will count as a good deed for you and Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم saw that amongst the good deeds and on the opposite he saw amongst the bad deeds or the sins somebody who is making dirt or causing any kind of uh, impurity in the uh, in the masjid so we have to keep the masjid clean even if we have janitors we have people who are paid to do that that's a communal duty on us we should keep it clean you know if everybody takes his or her own duty to just clean after yourself keep it as clean as you found it you're not talking about the ideal the ideal is if you see them, something wrong Go ahead, wash it, clean it. You would do it in your house, right? You would do it even if you have somebody that you pay to come and clean the house. If you see something dirt in your room, in your bed, whatever, around your desk, you will clean it. That, that should be even better than your house. You should deal with the masjid with more respect, with more love than you deal with your house. We don't see this with many Muslims. I say, we see Muslims doing, I don't want to give examples. Doing things in the masjid that are dirty, that they wouldn't do it in their home. Keep it clean. The way we use the bathroom. Bathrooms are dirty. I don't know. Even in very nice massages, I have been around so many massages in the States. And for some reason, that's not a priority for Muslims. That's wrong. Let's keep it clean. The way we use the bathroom, the way we come out of the bathroom, the way we use the musalla, the way we use even the community room when we eat. Look at any community. You know, meeting, I mean like the uh, activities we have, we just ask everybody to clean after you. No matter how old or how young you are, you will definitely, when you eat, you will drop some rice here or there, some stuff. Make sure you clean. Because if you have a hundred people sitting and eating, then some of them are not cleaning after themselves. Having in mind that we have a lot of kids and you should be responsible for your kids in the masjid, well, Let's keep the masjid clean because if you keep it clean, if you remove anything bad from the masjid, it counts as good deed for you and the opposite, the vice, vice versa. When you come to the masjid part of keeping the masjid clean, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made it obligatory. Even before he made it obligatory, Allah says in the Quran, Ya Bani Adam, khudhu zinatakum inda kulli masjid. O children of Adam, take your zina, adornment. At each single masjid, place of prayer, place you make sujood, zina. You do not come from work by the dirty clothes, smelling and stuff, no. Even if you eat as in the hadith, al-basal, wal qurrab wal thawm. If you eat these kind of onions and garlic and stuff that smells, or any food that smells, فَلْيَعْتَزِلْ مُصَلَّانَ Let him not come to pray with us while being like this. That definitely includes the smokers, smoking. You do not smell yourself, my brother or my sister. You do not, you do not know how do you smell when you are smoking or anything like that. When humans around you, you will have some people in direct touch with you, standing in prayer, talking privately to you. And you are talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in prayer and angels are there. So you should not smell bad at all. It's in the opposite. You should even, it's sunnah when you come especially for big gatherings like Jum'ah to have perfume. To take zina, any kind of ornament. Perfume that's for male by the way. Again, we keep highlighting. Not making up these rules by the way. Hadith in Nabi Sallallahu a woman cannot go out, especially for the masjid, while having perfumes. That's what the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said. You smell a lot of, you know, female perfumes. I mean, that's wrong. We are not ju judgmental in here, but we beside the rules of Islam. So we should, we should keep the masjid clean. Try our best to even... Can Abdullah Umar used to make bakhur or uh, good perfumes in the masjid. 
let's do it. Let's take good care. Sometimes you get to the mission and it smells, especially when a big group comes and so on. Let's take care of our mission and deal with it as we deal with our homes. Not only as far as cleaning, as far as maintaining it. Many times I come to the mission and I see the lights are on. Haram, ya khwan. That's the Amwal Muslimin. This is the money of Muslims. This is like your home. You would not keep the door open while the air condition is on, for example, in your office or in your home. We see it, I see it in the masjid. You see like people turning AC all the way to 60 or 65, cool. That's not right. You would ruin the unit. I mean, let's just use the common sense. Let's deal with the masjid just as your home. Or as a good Muslim, better than your home. Whatever needed to be done, the last person, turn off the lights. That goes without saying. Take, let's take care of our message of these minimal little things because they, they do uh, affect the entire jama'ah. It's an order from Allah. Imperative. You, children of Adam, take your ornament at any uh, masjid when you come. It's many things are allowed to, to be done in the masjid, like hatta la'ib riyadha, even prayer, exercising or playing some kind of a sport is legal in the masjid. And Nabi Sallallahu did it on the day of Eid when those Abyssinian people were playing with uh, some kind of spears and so on. That's not to say Masjid and Qalib al Riyadh, it's not like a fitness center or anything. No. Everything, as long as it's within the context, should be fine. Number one goal for the Masjid is, as Nabi Sallallahu said, in the Majurim, it's Masjid is being done while he was teaching this man who uh, peed in one side of the Masjid. He told him that this Masjid, are being done for dhikrullah wa qiraat al-Qur'an, remembering, mentioning Allah and qiraat al-Qur'an. That's top priority. And again here, talking about very specific, our very specific situation here, I am repeating this. If a salah is going on, dear brothers and sisters, if especially salah is going on, no other activity whatsoever should happen. In the masjid, and I say in the school, not saying to stop the school or anything, but I know that some activities, some brothers and sisters do it here in the masjid sometimes or in the school. That's wrong. If a jama'ah is just a few inches away or a few feet away, everybody should come. Everybody should join the jama'ah. Should take priority. It's even as we organize our schedules, giving appointments for each other or setting our schedule, let's give priority for salah times. Hopefully you can come and make it in the masjid. But if not, let's organize our times around salah time. Because salah times, it's Allah calling. Allahu Akbar, hayya ala salah. Come to prayer, come to success. Let's commemorate this. One of the mistakes also is that it's haram to leave the masjid after the adhan is being made. Adhan is done, the call for prayer. And then you leave the masjid. I see, it. we see it a lot. As long as you do not have a strong excuse, not just because you want to go and I pray home. We see it, some people coming to pick up their children or anything, or picking up children from the school. I'm not here to criticize, by the way. I'm saying my views based on what I think. Some of them could be right, some of them could be wrong. I'm just sharing it with you. If somebody is close by the masjid and there is jama'ah or salat, usually it takes like 7 minutes, 10 minutes. And I'm telling you, if you do not join this jama'ah, are you sure you're going to pray at home? And if you are sure you're going to pray at home, how about your kids? Let's teach our youngers and ourselves to, to join when there is something going on. What could be going on better than salah, prayer, and jama'ah? And you are close by. Abu Huraira, when he saw somebody, the friend of the Prophet, saw somebody leaving the masjid after the adhan was made. He said, As for this person who left, he disobeyed the Prophet ﷺ. He did not go after him and say, how could he know? But he, he should. Yubayin, he should clarify what's right and what's wrong. Then it's up to people to do. People will still continue, you know, doing bad things in the masjid. You are not a police of halal or haram, but you have to clarify in the best way, in the nicest way. We are here to clarify haram to leave the masjid uh, when the salah or the adhan is being made. Let's pay attention. Many times I'm coming for Maghrib or for other Salah and I see somebody leaving. It happens a lot, not right. Some people are having appointment to do anything, usually in the gym or something, during Salah time, not right. Come to make Salah and then go any, do any other activity that you want to do. It's not because the Imam is leading the Salah or it's, it's an appointment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that happened to be 
around that time. Coming to the cell phones in the masjid, I think Allah alam the problem or the thing is it's right. Masjid is it belongs to everybody. We deal with the masjid that it's my house, it's my my place. My place. That's right. But in the same way, it's everybody's place. Like, yes, it's my place, and I should deal with it as my home or my house. But the one next to me, the sister next to me, deals with it in the same way. How can we accommodate one another? We should deal with it as our masjid, as our, as our house, by keeping it clean and maintaining it and everything. At the same time, we should deal with it as there are some people with me. So I should smell good, I should accommodate others. One of these ways to accommodate others is the cell phones, especially during Salah. It happens a lot, a lot, ya ikhwan. And I receive a lot of complaints. A letter came from the sister uh, uh, some time back. And we see, when you see all kinds of, of you know, ringtones coming off during the Salah or during a football like this, well, I mean, things can happen. But let's exert more effort to keep the phones out there or the... Uh, uh, you know, turn them down or something. I mean, I can, I cannot see much of excuse for that high rate of cell phones ringing in the masjid. You are affecting the salah of others. You have to respect them. If you, th if you think it's fine with you, it's not fine with other people. Leave it on while you are at home. That's your own problem. But you are in a masjid. Let's accommodate each other. And if it happens, and you are a if you are in sujood, usually in sujood, then it's tied. If you have to get out of your prayer, get out. I'm giving you the fatwa. Leave the prayer. Put your hand in your phone and get it and shut it down. Let it stop. Especially when it's ringing the hip hop and stuff. We talk about this later. It's ringing very loud and stuff. Some pagers. I'm not very familiar with the pager, but I'm sure that there is a bottom or something to, to stop it. Stop it, please. Do not keep it going on and on and on forever and destroying the salah of others. This is a lot of sha'ir Allah, a lot of the rites, rituals of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are being done here. Whoever, whoever is respecting it, it's as if he is respecting. Um, make sure when you write down something for the Imam or for anybody to write it clear. I guess that's a position. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, let's deal with it. Yes, it's my home and your home, but let's accommodate one another. There are a lot of things to be said, but very quickly, we see people talking while the adhan is being made. Talking loud and laughing and making jokes here in the musalla, not even saying outside. Wrong. Nabi said, إِذَا When you hear the call for prayer, say just like the mu'adhin is saying. Do you know what is the reward in that? There is big reward if whoever says that in Hadith Umar, Whoever says just like the Mu'addin, deep from his heart, what is the word? Dakhal al-Jannah. He will make it to al-Jannah. Oh no, I'm not worried about Jannah. I actually have something to joke around here with my friends. Joking is not haram, but here during the Adhan in the Masjid and out now, no, not right. You see people, the minute they leave this door, and sometimes even before they leave this door, especially since Jama'ah is still on, I mean like or Salah or some people praying Sunnah, they talk out loud, not right. Wait until you get outside. And even when you are outside, my brother or my sister, well, like, you know, if you pray sunnah in here, you can hear people out there because they shout out loud, not haram. But if it's going to affect the prayer of somebody else, that's going to be wrong. Let's accommodate one another as far as this. Uh, you see people in Jum'ah coming, somebody coming late, and he insists to come in the first line. Wrong. You sat at the first available spot for you. But on the other hand, you see people coming very early, but they insist for a reason or another to stay on, right on the entrance. Well, how long it's going to take you to come out of the masjid, even if the masjid is full? I know, I'm aware that you have, you know, a lot of appointments and work and stuff, but well, like, literally, you block the entrance. You block it. Come the first, you know, the first line and sit down. You come early, the closest you are to the, the, the Imam, the higher reward you get. This is what the scholar said. Come early, as early as possible, and fill, you know, the first line first.
الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين الآثمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. A lot of things actually to be said as far as we talking about the masjid, but I'm kind of summarizing what I want to say, you know, as much as as possible. We see some people sometimes they come, they want to do their sunnah. They know we pray Isha, for example, these days at nine o'clock. He come five seconds to nine, and he insists to pray right here behind the imam, blocking the imam. Why is that? It's good to come early. It's good to pray right behind the imam, but go pray right or left or anywhere. You see, two three people make a line. They already block the imam, so they make sure that I mean they could have a good intention that they want to join the imam from beginning, but I mean like you blocking uh, people from coming. Same thing, if you are coming, you do not want to pray sunnah in front of the door, so you block blocking others from getting. We know it's haram or not right to pass in front of somebody who is praying. But it's also a duty of the per person who is praying to come all the way to the front or behind the chair or something, not just in the middle of the masjid or in front of the entrance. Let's pay attention to this inshallah. You see some people sometimes standing up, they know, yeah, we pray at 9 o'clock, maybe the imam is still making wudu or something. I said many times, do not wait for me, if the imam is not here, the most qualified person, get in and lead the prayer, fine. But if the Imam is here and everything, I mean like, let's wait until he comes. When it's time for Iqamat Salah, do not stand up until you see me, the Imam. Because you might stand up expecting the Imam to stand up now, but he is probably talking to somebody or, or so. Let's make it easy on ourselves. One of the most important things, even though time is, is up, at the Fa'ul Ma'al Masjid. You know, let's interact with the masjid. Very important. You might need a khutbah by itself for that. People are coming to the masjid, you know, enjoying everything going on, but they are not part of what's going on. Let's activate our masjid, ayyuhal akarim. Let's be part of what's going on. Something is going on today. Here, the, we uh, are voting, inshallah, right after salah, voting for the bylaws. There are some kind of amendments on the bylaws. And we see, subhanAllah, even I will lie, I'm a witness to this. I saw the brothers and sisters in the board doing their best, as, as much as they can do. Publicize, sending emails, uh, printing papers, you know, handing papers one-on-one -on, -one on a couple of weeks ago to make people aware of this. When the bylaws were changing, they did it professionally, they got an attorney looking at it and everything, and then shared it with the community for almost like a week or two weeks, something like that, to have a look at it and give their input. They had the assembly meeting, they announced it. I'm not sure what else can be done. Yes, they are humans, I'm sure there are some mistakes, just like I have mistakes, you have mistakes, everybody has mistakes. But the, at least the minimum thing has been done, community has been announced about it. And then, uh, we have a community meeting, assembly meeting, sometimes only two people. One time two people came, another time ten people came. That's not right. Let's, you know, activate, you know, the, the, what's going on, be part of it. So the voting is going to happen right now, and it's a little card like this. You just say yes or no for the amendments of the bylaws. I'm telling you, the brothers and sisters in the board, Wallahi, I'm a witness. They have done what they could. Maybe they could have been better, but they have done, I've seen them working and putting hours and hours. They have done what could be done. And there are some people who showed interest. Brother Rashid in here. He came with a lot of points when it was time to discuss it. And he discussed it. And I mean, I mean like, it was all open. The fall was open for anybody to come. So please take just a couple of minutes. It's not going to take a couple of minutes of your time. To just uh, uh, write down your name. And put yes or no if you agree or if you disagree or even abstain. If you abstain from, you don't want to be part of that. Uh, it will be open right now. Right now you should see a table uh, in the sister side and the table on the uh, brother side in the lobby. And just write what you uh, think or what you believe. And it will be open also for uh, some people who might not be here today. They are out of town or something. It will be open on Sunday from 1 to 2. After Salat al -Dhur, all the way to 2 o'clock. So make sure please to vote. That's one of the values that we learn from the states in here. Use your power. Do not be part of what's going on, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, we, inshallah, probably might have an extension for uh, uh, another khutbah about the masjid and the role of the masjid because they still have a lot of points. One thing I remind uh, before, we, uh, before I come down from here is, again, we're talking about this uh, anti-sharia law. 
and they have been trying to get it through last year. They failed. They brought it back again. And we had some Muslims, mashallah, actively they went on the Muslim capital day and showed their uh, disagreement to that. But then it got through. There are so many or at least some uh, levels to get through. It passed through the first level and it's time for us to stand up for our rights. Ya ayyuhal akadim. Wallahi, Brother Hashim Mubarak today was sharing with me that some Jews and some non-Muslims are even standing and they even wrote an article in the newspaper against it. Against this law. How about us Muslims? Let's stand for our rights. What you can do simply is send an email or give a phone call to the senator, to the officials. Let them, let your voice be heard that this is not right. We don't want this to happen. I guess Brother Andre should have some information uh, and he can share inshallah with the community the phone numbers of the senators or, or the people that you need to call. Please pay attention to these emails and stand for your rights. It's not going to take more than a couple of minutes. Passing a law like this is, is horrific because anything that's sharia or can be described as sharia will be illegal. And what can be described as sharia? What we are doing now is sharia. We are doing khutbah, salat, jum'ah, praying, opening masajid, even getting married to your wife according to the sharia law, coming to the imam or making it the Islamic way. That's going to be, could be banned. Even though some people say, no, Islam is not there, but it could be, that's sharia. So down the road, maybe in the future, some extremist people could use it or misuse it against Muslims. We don't want this to happen. We just need to stand for our right, inshallah. Let's make it. Expect the email to come to you and uh, do your part, inshallah. Qulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi hadhi sa'at an yagfir lana dhunubana. Allahumma agfir lana dhunubana. Allah forgive our sins, ya Rabbil Alameen. Direct us for the best, ya Rahman al-Rahameen. Allahumma ahdi qulubana lil-Iman. Allahumma amla qulubana bil-Hikmati wa bil-Nuri, ya Rabbil Alameen. Oh Allah, fill our hearts with wisdom and with the light from you, ya Rabbil Alameen. اللهم نور قلوبنا بالقرآن وملأ حياتنا بعلم القرآن وبما فيه والعمل بما فيه يا رب العالمين. Give us the understanding of the Quran, the light of the Quran, the living according to the Quran يا رب العالمين. Make us in the highest living in Jannah, level of Jannah because of the Quran يا رب العالمين. اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأقيم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتاب المنطق.